All right, so we're ready for the final, final section of the uh, materials chapter, appearance, material, textures. Big chapter, almost 100 slides now. Uh, I'm sure as we uh, add more improvements over time, it'll even get bigger. So big doesn't mean hard, though. just means there are a lot of stuff. So let's look at the last few pieces in uh, texture transform. Uh, we have a node that allows us to align and rotate and change textures in a scene and move things up and down. Uh, so the idea here is that we would reposition images on top of the geometry so that we could align them properly just right. Okay, And so uh, since an image texture, a movie texture, pixel texture. Since all three types of textures are two-dimensional, they have uh, height and width, we have a two-dimensional coordinate system, and then two-dimensional translation, scaling, and rotation within that same 2D plane. Okay, now there is a gotcha in here, uh, although they are quite similar to 3D transformation, the rotation itself is a little bit counterintuitive. So let's look at that. The uh, axes, which we saw early in the chapter, uh, are uh, S and T are uh, very important, those coordinates, but the, when we translate them, it's actually uh, what we're rotating about, is, what we're rotating are the axes of S and T and not the uh, center of the image. So that's why it's a little bit counterintuitive. Let's take a look at the picture first and then reread the words here. Uh, as, as you probably recall, S and T are our coordinate systems. For the image. Okay, and so here we're in the local, on the right hand side, we're in the uh, local uh, image centric coordinate plane. And so um, the way it works is, uh, as you would expect, it would to go one way, it actually goes the other way. And uh, that's a little counterintuitive, but that's the way it works. So uh, since it's always been that way, and since that's the way graphics hardware and the different tools are working, we wanted to keep it the same way. So similar to the 3D transform, we do have some flexibility, though. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, where the center is that we rotate about. And we also have consistency. We use rotation values in radians. And then finally, our scale is uh, similar in that we have non-uniform scaling. So often the best way to do this is through uh, an example and test it out. So here's an example of texture transform. And we're using the uh, pixel texture and we can see that in this case we just had a uh, single change in there where we uh, translated the texture and uh, you can sort of see the difference here uh, right away in that the one cone had uh, the texture applied in one way you can see we have uh, green at the bottom and green at the top magenta at the bottom and the top on the other side, but here since it's been shifted we have uh, different values. Top's almost the same, bottom's definitely uh, different. Let's look at another example. Okay, here on this example we've got uh, a change in the center, in the rotation, and in the translation. And, uh, and also in the scaling. Okay, so four different values have been modified. So let's take a look at those examples in, the, uh, in X3D Edit. or at least the uh, 
full example. Okay, here it is, it plugged in to the scene, plugged into the embedded XJ3D added viewer. If we edit our texture transform, we can uh, get these values exposed right here. So if we look over on the left hand side, we see that, okay, 0 0.707, that's a, uh, a uh, right hand, uh, a, a positive right hand rotation. 0.7 doubled is uh, almost 1.5. 1.5 is half of pi. Pi is 180 degrees. Half is 90. Half again is 45. So that's uh, an almost 45 degree rotation just using uh, a simple estimation. Why don't we change that to a much smaller value and we'll make it a negative value and see what happens. Okay, let's uh, I think we have an issue in the current build with this guy not updating locally well enough. So let's launch it in every and take a look, look at all the different browsers in this guy's. So this is illuminating. Uh, as we get there, we can see that the other browsers are uh, aliasing the textures, they're uh, uh, anti-aliasing the textures, blurring them together, and that uh, XJ3D is the only one changing it. Let's see how much, uh, or making them sharp edges. Let's see if I can get back to X3D edit to compare it. And Well, it didn't look like we rotated it by a very different amount. It looks the same. Aha, I did not save my change. Now that I've saved it, let's reload. And sure enough, uh, 20 degree rotation made a big difference on our, our test thing. Okay, so what's the, the right value? Well, uh, <laughs> beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. Uh, that's up to you where you want the... Uh, change to be. Not all of the browsers are supporting pixel texture. Uh, this is uh, much less controversial if you're just using plain old textures, regular image texture. Uh, should we be aliasing pixel texture or not? Uh, I, think, I think we might be leaving that up as a browser choice. Did we, if, did we record this the other day, uh, Rich, as an issue? If not, please do. Let's say, uh, let's get a spec resolution on whether pixel textures should be aliased or not. Yes, Jeff? Can you have, does x 3 have some sort of aliasing mode? No. So that's why I think the spec is silent, and we're probably getting different values in this case because <laughs> in a big complex texture, the it's a user preference is often where you find that setting. Uh, uh, do how much anti-aliasing should I do? There's different levels of it. In fact, XJ3D has a switch you can do uh, for that. Let's look up that switch in the help contents. It's not under uh, ID, but right here under XJ3D hotkeys. There it is right there. A Alt A, anti-aliasing cycle through the graphics card alternatives. So let's do that all day. In this case, none, because I think they're being strict about pixel texture. If this was a more complicated texture like Hello World, then we would see uh, some differences in how it gets treated. Let's pull up Hello World.
Okay, we'll zoom in on this guy and we'll see if Alt A gives us any changes. Nothing visible, so it might be either that uh, this texture doesn't have the granularity to be dealt with or it's just not working. And I think we're seeing symptoms of it's just not working right now. Okay, so, you know, welcome to the frontier. We want our tools to do better. Reporting problems is the best way. Now that we can see them all side by side a little more easy, easily, I think we'll uh, do that. Uh, meantime, this is a good spec question. And if the spec's unclear, then we'll post it on the list and talk about it there. Even in fact, in this case, since the spec, whether it's clear or not, it's certainly not being implemented consistently. So we'll see if we can't get consensus among the browsers to do that. All right, so what else can we say about texture transform? I think we're just about there. Pay close attention to the direction that you go in. Test your results. You can think all day about was it left, right, up, or down, but look at it, test it in the browsers, and that's how you get there. Um, this is uh, borderline, the difficulty on texture transform. For fancy textures, if it's borderline difficult enough, you might be wanting to use a, a high-end tool. Uh, the next notes are uh, along those lines too. Texture coordinates let us define uh, points within that S and T coordinate space of one to one, or zero to one S, zero to one T. Let us pick points of a texture and slice out pieces of the texture so that we could put it on uh, just the piece on the geometry and not the whole thing. Uh, you may have seen textures where there are, uh, for example, uh, face images. You can take a special camera, you can get a face image map it so it just lays out flat and then you'll see them put arms and legs and hands and other things. And so you might have a single square image with all the parts of a body, all the textures there. They would be then using texture coordinate nodes to slice and dice those, pull them out, stick them on, wrap them on the geometry as important. Uh, in fact, I should, let's uh, go ahead, please put in the notes uh, to do, uh, let's get a picture as an example of that, how to do it. Now given that you could do it, doesn't mean that you would do it using X3D Edit. X3D Edit will let you inspect and modify all these values, but what I just described there is, is actually a pretty sophisticated technique and you would want to use uh, uh, Maya or 3D Studio Max or uh, perhaps Vividi Studio or a high-end uh, authoring tool. Uh, I think Blender, Blender's a free tool. It does uh, some of this work. I'm sure it'll become uh, if it's not perfect yet, I'm sure it will be. Uh, Say again, Ken? Wings 3D. Wings 3D can do some of that. And there is a list of uh, tools on the X3D resources page that can export X3D or export Perma. Good way to get ahead. Okay, so there are the hints on what are the values on a texture coordinate node. Then finally, something recent, I believe this was uh, version 3.2 we added a texture coordinate generator node which uh, basically is procedural meaning it's a type of script it's a type of function that uh, lets us uh, compute points based on a function so there's a whole field of uh, procedural texturing in other words algorithm created images and this would correspond to that. Could you uh, uh, take advantage of those techniques and apply them? Now, this node is definitely uh, very complicated and definitely something you want to use in uh, uh, a special tool for, that we don't provide any built-in 3D authoring. Because X3D Edit is not a, a 3D authoring environment, it's an editing environment. We're not working in 3 space to move things around. So if you read the fine print on all of these different parameter 
values and the different mode enumerations. You see it is quite detailed. Uh, how do we know those work? Because we exactly mapped to uh, uh, the primary uh, rendering cards, we mapped to uh, OpenGL and DirectX. Uh, which is uh, low-level APIs used in graphics hardware and looked at a few other things too. We had a number of experts do this. So there are a few example scenes out there. We don't have any yet. Uh, I'm open for submissions. If somebody wants to send in one or two of each that are uh, illustrative. But at the end of the day, you would use a, a specialty tool for it. This lets some of those higher end scenes export to X3D and let those values be carried right through to the graphics card. Okay, so uh, tool tips and there we are. We're done with uh, the mega chapter. So here's a very cool tool right here under additional uh, resources. Pellucid, this thing's been around over a decade now. Eric Haynes has written books on uh, real-time rendering. Very sharp guy. He's got a nice little uh, Java applet here that would let us uh, uh, change some values and then compute whether and what the uh, uh, result might be. So this is uh, similar to the uh, rendering we have built into X3D Edit, helped inspire it, and uh, it's another good resource for you if you want, uh, well, let's say a uh, second opinion. See if I can get back to the right window here. There we go. Uh, what else? Uh, PNG, Portable Network Graphics. This is the uh, open standard for images that replaced uh, GIF, Graphics Interchange Format, over a decade ago. This is uh, very well documented, very well supported, superior to GIF, technically not encumbered, and a pretty interesting story, too, if you want to see what happened when people said, uh, fight the power, <laughs> fix the problem. JPEG uh, is also uh, quite well documented. Here are a few, uh, a few references there. And similarly for movie textures, we have the uh, MPEG resource sites. Uh, outstanding book on all things uh, digital video is by uh, Charles Poynton. He's had some uh, tutorials at SIGGRAPH in, in years past. Okay, so let's sum it up. Appearance. Appearance is a collector node that brings in all the different ways of changing how geometry looks. Okay, none of them are geometric per se. All of them affect the presentation of the geometry. So the primary node we use is material. We'll sometimes use uh, two-sided material if we want fine-tuned controlling over the inside of geometry as well as the outside. Line properties and fill properties changed the edges and the patterns uh, inside of geometry. Our textures are very important. Moving the textures around, very important. All great uh, uh, techniques all add to the realism of your scene. What's left here are the suggested exercises uh, that you do as a way to cement your own understanding, uh, the types of things you could do. Uh, using te textures looks easy. In practice, it's, it's a good challenge. In fact, it, it's, it really exercises both your artistic abilities as well as your technical strengths. Can you master the collection of photographs? Can you get the lighting? Uh, to be appropriate. Can you get the images themselves edited down, cropped, perhaps adjusted using uh, photo modification software, uh, and then applying it properly uh, in your 3D scene? All good challenges. Uh, if you are using other images, such as uh, it's very easy to pull down images off the web. There's uh, great ways to search for that thing. Please do make proper uh, credit in, in your work for that. So there are meta tags where you can do that. You can also put them in the comments. For our open source archives, we will not put images in unless we know where they came from. 
and either we've taken them ourselves, in which case they're not credited, except with the author's name, or we'll put in a little release, a, a license, we'll get an agreement from whoever the owner of the image was prior to putting it in. And that way, in all of our content libraries, people can just grab them without worrying about what's hidden in there. Okay, we talked about how to make a pixel texture. Uh, go ahead, do it. Do it if you haven't yet. Also uh, showed movie texture. That's another good thing to do. Finally, our uh, regular references here. Uh, uh, we have our uh, uh, authoring hints as well as the authoring tool. We have the spec is always there for questions like that. Wormel Sourcebook remains a tremendous resource. In this case, uh, our chapter is so big because they took four chapters to do it, to cover the materials and the various issues with texturing. Of course, uh, uh, that source book is fully documented with all of the examples, and you can pull any one of them down and check them out. Uh, finally, uh, Maureen Stone uh, has done a tremendous job. There are a lot of good books out on color. Uh, I like Maureen's probably the best. It's uh, extremely thorough very colorful itself, very uh, good uh, reference. And then a fairly recent uh, book by uh, uh, Julie Dorsey and Holly Rushmeyer and uh, Francois Sillion is uh, Digital Modeling of Material and Appearance. And they go into lots and lots of, not just the basics that we saw in this chapter, but many advanced techniques on how you can get uh, incredibly photorealistic and, and perhaps super realistic ways of rendering and doing stuff. So it's an excellent survey of a huge amount of literature. It gives uh, very practical examples. It goes beyond what we're currently capable of doing in X3D and uh, uh, it's always good to uh, have your reach exceed your grasp, to have goals where you can keep going. Okay, there we go. Yes. Okay.